When most people think of China, they often picture massive fields full of crops and a farming giant feeding billions. But here's the twist. China doesn't actually have that much good farmland. Even though the country is huge, only a small slice of its land can be used for agriculture. On top of that, water shortages make growing food even harder. With 1.4 billion people to feed, it's a tightrope walk. There's little room for mistakes. Now imagine an idea so bold it sounds like something out of science fiction. Taking seawater from Bohai Bay and sending it thousands of kilometers inland to turn the dry deserts of Xinjiang into 180 million acres of productive farmland. That's more land than some countries use for all their farming combined. This isn't just some wild dream. Experts, including those from the United Nations, are calling it a potential modern miracle. But is this truly a breakthrough or a high-stakes risk? Could this be the future of China's food security or just another huge problem in the making? As we explore this idea, ask yourself, can human innovation really turn empty desert into farmland on this massive scale? Xinjiang is China's biggest province by size, about as large as Texas and California put together. It's known for its wide open land, endless sunshine, and vast space. But there's a catch. Over 90% of this land is either desert or rapidly becoming one. This creeping desertification means the ground is dry, cracked, and useless for farming. Why? Because Xinjiang gets only around 150 millimeters of rain per year, less than some actual deserts. On top of that, evaporation rates can exceed 2,000 millimeters annually, meaning any rain that does fall vanishes quickly. So even with all this space, farming here is nearly impossible without a dependable source of water. Imagine owning a giant backyard but having no hose to water your plants. That's Xinjiang's big agricultural problem. Trying to farm here means going head-to-head -head with nature on a massive scale. To fight Xinjiang's dryness, China is considering a mega engineering project that feels like it's straight from a sci-fi movie. It's called the Yinbo to Xinjiang Water Transfer Project. The idea? Pump seawater from Bohai Bay, China's least salty sea, all the way west to the deserts of Xinjiang. Here's how it's supposed to work. Seawater would travel thousands of kilometers through giant pipelines crossing mountains, deserts, and plains along two main routes. One of these routes would be about 3,200 kilometers long, using natural dips in the land and gravity to help it flow through seven major desert regions. The second route would stretch over 5,000 kilometers and would use elevation changes to deliver water across different parts of Xinjiang. but they wouldn't use raw seawater. The plan involves desalination, removing the salt to make the water safe for irrigation. This idea was first introduced at a science conference in 2010 and once seemed like pure fantasy. But now, thanks to better pipeline systems, improved energy networks, and smarter water tech, it's becoming a serious possibility. Picture it like building a super highway for water from the sea straight into the desert powered by clever design and modern technology. As exciting as this all sounds, many experts have serious concerns. One major issue is salt buildup. If seawater isn't properly desalinated before being used, it can leave salt in the soil. This already happened in the Tarim Basin, where poor drainage turned once usable farmland into wasteland. Then, there's the enormous cost. Moving and desalinating billions of tons of water across thousands of kilometers will require huge amounts of energy and money. Some are asking whether such a project can even pay for itself in the long run. Another big worry is the impact on Bohai Bay. Removing large amounts of seawater could disturb marine life that's already under stress. Plus, desalination creates brine, a salty waste product, that can be toxic to sea life if not handled carefully. To give you an idea of scale, moving 100 billion tons of seawater a year would create around 3 billion tons of leftover salt.
That's more than 10 times the total global salt demand each year. While the plan is definitely bold and inspiring, it's also risky. Pulling it off without major issues will require smart planning, massive investment, and serious innovation. Otherwise, it could just repeat past failures. Now let's take a look at what could go right if this project actually works. Xinjiang is already a major force in Chinese agriculture, producing over 85% of the country's cotton, but it holds even more promise. The region has more than 800 million acres of land that could be farmed, if only it had enough water. If the seawater transfer plan succeeds, Xinjiang could almost double China's total farmland. Desert could become fields full of high-value crops. With rich sunlight and fertile soil, the area is ideal for plants like cotton, grapes, and tomatoes, crops that could boost local farmers' incomes. And it wouldn't stop at farming. This project could spark entire new industries. Imagine processing centers for grapes making Xinjiang a top global raisin exporter. More farmland also means more jobs, not just on farms but in building pipelines, manufacturing equipment, and other related sectors. Crucially, this could ease the pressure on the already overused farmland in eastern China, helping to reduce environmental damage there. So, in the big picture, this isn't just about water or crops, it's about transforming China's food system and regional economy. So how can China pull off a project this massive without spending a fortune? The answer lies in high-tech solutions and smarter planning. Right now, turning seawater into fresh water costs about 5 to 8 RMB per ton worldwide. That's pricey, especially when we're talking about needing trillions of tons. But China is banking on new technology, like nuclear-powered desalination, to bring that cost down, possibly to just 1 RMB per ton. That's a huge drop, making the whole idea a lot more realistic. Moving water over thousands of kilometers is another big challenge. For comparison, the South North Water Transfer Project costs around 2 RMB per cubic meter to move water through pipelines. The new routes to Xinjiang will be even harder, but technologies like AI-powered smart pipelines could help control water flow and cut down on energy use. Solar-powered pumps could also offer a cleaner and cheaper way to push water through tough terrain. In short, technology is the key. It's not just helping the project happen. It's what could make it affordable and sustainable. Of course, big dreams alone won't make this work. For this water transfer to last, China has to carefully balance ambition with responsibility, both to the environment and local communities. One major risk is salt in the soil. When irrigation water evaporates, it can leave behind salt, which ruins the land. This already happened in parts of the Tarim Basin in Xinjiang. That's why any large-scale farming here needs strong soil care programs and smart irrigation that stops salt buildup and protects farmland. There's also the marine side to consider. Pulling huge amounts of seawater from Bohai Bay could hurt ocean ecosystems. Desalination creates brine, a salty waste filled with chemicals. If it's not handled right, it can damage marine life. Experts say we need advanced ways to dispose of or reuse brine without harming the sea. And then there's the weather. Just adding more moisture to the region doesn't mean it will rain. In dry areas like Xinjiang, weather modification tools, like cloud seeding, might be needed to help turn that water into real rainfall. In the end, this project depends on smart planning, constant monitoring, and careful execution. It's about aiming high but staying grounded in science to avoid creating new problems while solving old ones. China's big water project might sound like something from a sci-fi story, but it follows a familiar pattern. This is a country that often turns massive ideas into reality. From the Three Gorges Dam to a nationwide high-speed rail system, China's megaprojects have repeatedly pushed limits. 
But this plan isn't just about engineering. It raises big questions. How we use scarce water, how to spread development fairly, and how to protect the planet while moving forward. Can Xinjiang's deserts really be turned into green farmland without serious consequences? Will the benefits of food security and new jobs be worth the cost and risk? As viewers, we're left to consider, is this an inspiring vision that could lead the world, or a dangerous bet with too much at stake? If this journey into the future of water and farming got you thinking, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Join the conversation and follow along as we see how water innovation might reshape what's possible.